Welcome back to part two of my indie game devlog. Last video, we went over the core design concept of our game, discussed the main reference, and put together a super bare bones prototype to begin developing the game. This time, we'll be focusing on getting some of the most basic inputs into our prototype, so it hopefully starts resembling a game. But before we can add any features in, we need to know what we're adding in, which means looking back at our core reference. So, Playing through some more Hotline Miami, the input scheme is fairly straightforward. We previously reviewed that the WASD keys move the player, the mouse moves the camera, and shift key extends vision. These functions neatly fit into our character controller that we already developed. Beyond that, the control scheme is fairly simple. Left click attacks with an equipped weapon in the direction of the mouse pointer. Right click simultaneously equips items found on the ground and throws held items if currently carrying any, launching the item in the direction of the pointer similar to a ranged weapon. Spacebar executes any knocked down and still living enemies, and the middle mouse button locks the cursor onto enemies. That last one is particularly notable, since I only discovered that mechanic a little later in, uh, so for the time being I've not implemented anything similar. And during my own playthrough of the game, I never felt an auto-aim was actually necessary. However, I'm pretty confident in assuming that it was added as a measure for controller players, so I'll likely need to investigate adding something similar in the future. For now, I'll be implementing these controls practically one-to-one, -one, apart from the execute, which for now I'll be binding to the E key. Instead, I've reserved the space key for a mechanic I'm lifting from another reference game, Heat Signature. Uh, this game has a lot in common with Hotline Miami, mechanically speaking. However, it extends on it in a lot of different ways to cater to a roguelike playstyle, with a lot of different ways to approach the randomly generated ships that you encounter in the game. One mechanic in particular is the ability to freeze time with the space key, which works for multiple reasons. First, it lets players utilize their entire inventory of items to get out of pretty much any scrape they might encounter. And second, it lets players think through how they'll approach a particularly difficult situation without them needing to be unnecessarily cautious, which we discussed in the last video was one of the behaviors I'm trying to avoid in particular. So for the time being, our control scheme will be looking something like this. One last thing to comment on before implementing any controls, I've got a decent amount of experience programming but not only do I have tons of room to improve, but more complex systems are sort of beyond me. For that reason, knowing pathfinding would be an important system to add for our enemies, I went ahead and added the A-star pathfinding project to the game, which I'd previously picked up in a sale on the Unity Asset Store. It came heavily recommended and has so far been fairly robust for my uses. It also came with a basic character made from default Unity blocks, so I went ahead and used that to, I guess, jazz up our player character in the absence of my own programming art. Now that we've finally gotten that out of the way, let's start with some core gameplay controls, specifically attacking. Warning, this is where we'll start delving into more programming related concepts and architecture. And frankly speaking, I have no clue the best way to do this. So I apologize both to people who are not interested in programming and people who are super interested in programming. To hopefully keep it manageable for all audiences, I'll be describing these systems at a fairly high level, only getting into how these parts talk to each other to execute an intended effect. Anyway, after setting up a basic kinematic projectile and object pool for bullets, I wanted to develop a robust system that could handle multiple types of guns in a clear way that can be expanded upon in the future. The most straightforward types of guns that come to mind are semi-automatic guns like pistols, burst guns, like shotguns, repeating guns that shoot several bullets in a row, and automatic guns like assault rifles. To manage these, I set up a generic gun controller component that when given a set of values converts those into an attack pattern. If implemented well, I could conceivably apply the component to enemies and have them attack using the same code as the player. To tell this controller the specifications of the gun, I created a gun type, scriptable object, which is essentially a pre-made container of information that could be used to generate an array of different guns with similar shooting styles. This scriptable object tracks things like attack type, that is being semi-automatic, burst, etc., the bullet speed, 
the ammo capacity and the spread of the gun, plus a couple of other things. After hooking it all into a brand new player input manager I made, I ended up with this. As I experimented with increasing bullet speed, I did eventually come across an issue where bullets would pass through the colliders of walls and then continue flying perpetually. To handle this, knowing that walls are static objects and wouldn't be moving during runtime, I left the collider detecting on for enemies but removed it for walls, instead opting for a raycast system that shoots a ray out every time a bullet is shot, calculating the distance between it and the wall and then counts down as it travels, deleting itself once the distance hits zero. Being such an easy thing to implement, I also went ahead and implemented a time freeze ability. Currently, it just sets the time scale to zero, so both bullets and the player freeze in place. As mentioned in my previous devlog, this is where an issue arose with tracking the camera using fixed update, as fixed update doesn't actually run when time scale is set to zero. To fix this, whenever time is frozen, I just change the VCAM settings to update on every frame instead, and for now that kind of resolves the issue. So that's two controls out of the way. Next was the right click, equipping items and throwing them. Assuming it'd be the easier half, I got started on equipping items. I went ahead and created an equipable object, and this object can be populated with a gun type scriptable object that we made earlier, and pretty much just sits in the world looking pretty for now. When in range, the player can hit right click to immediately equip the item, removing it from the world, and passing its specified gun type into the player's gun controller. Pretty straightforward. Throwing weapons ended up being a little harder to implement, at first, I went ahead and turned our projectile component into a parent class and created an equipable projectile component that inherited from it, since most of the logic would be similar. From here, it was fairly easy to set up a projectile that launched out and placed the equipable object we made earlier wherever it lands. Obviously decaying over time since a thrown weapon doesn't travel infinitely like a bullet would. However, one way these objects differ from normal projectiles is that they bounce. This ended up being kind of a huge issue for me. I tried so many different methods of calculating this and it took plenty of time to figure out, especially since the colliders were bigger. I assumed the raycast system I used for the bullets would be overkill, but I was completely wrong. <laughs> In the end, my solution ended up just sending out a raycast whenever you throw a weapon. Uh, and then the moment it collides with a wall, it gets the walls normal, basically the direction the wall is facing, flips its angle accordingly, and then calculates a new raycast from that new angle. Effectively shooting out again from a new location with a bit more added decay to simulate the loss of kinetic energy. This took longer than I care to admit, but honestly, I am fairly happy with how the bounce feels now, so I can't be too upset. That being in place, it was straightforward to just add a check in the new input manager code that identifies if an item is held and throws it before the player can equip any items off the ground. This meant that three of our four basic controls were implemented and it was time to move on to something a bit more complex. One last thing I want to touch on in this devlog is some of the themes, aesthetic, and setting I'll be trying to focus on for this project. Some of the story beats and basically the entire setting is essentially being adapted from a world I built several years ago. It's a blend of cyberpunk and more traditional sci-fi, basically taking elements from one and forcibly cramming it into the other. If you're wondering, yes, I did most of the world building for the setting directly after playing Cyberpunk 2077. And no, I don't apologize for being so blatantly influenced by my experience with the game. <laughs> anyway, one of the things that I enjoyed the most about the setting was how localized it is inside of Night City. There's still a lot of lore that explains the world outside of it, but that all comes second to the city itself. Which after a past project where I tried writing an entire fantasy world, I was intrigued by the premise of such a focused environment. For now, all you need to know is that the place we'll be exploring is a colony named Concordia, containing within it Concord City. 
This colony is based on Eris, one of the dwarf planets in our solar system, as a blatant act of confrontation against the interplanetary community. It was the first unsanctioned space colony that paved the way for the mega-rich corporations to eventually own entire planets. Obviously, this project was a success and the corporations turned their attention elsewhere in search of more profits, leaving Concordia to its own devices, eventually leading to the point in time where we get to explore it. I won't spoil much more than that for now, it's still massively early days and I've already gotten further ahead of myself than I should. However, my intention is to provide a thematic lens that eventually everything will pass through. And as it'll inform many of my decisions going forward, it's important to clarify that ahead of time. Thanks to everyone who's made it to the end of this devlog. I've not got any experience making videos like this, so hearing the positive reception to the first one was really motivating. At the end of the day, I'm essentially doing all this in my free time, and aside from life frequently getting in the way, staying motivated on a project like this can always be difficult. I can say in my own personal experience, when I was working on Dialin, there were long stretches of time where I just completely lost motivation and could not bring myself to commit to any more development time. Hopefully, with a larger, more varied scope, I'll be able to avoid that in part. Next time, we'll start working on getting some logic in for the enemies, so we can get them running around and hopefully shooting back. If that sounds like something you'd be interested in or you'd like to keep up with the development of the game, be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you'll be alerted whenever a new video comes out.